us do another episode on ASUG12 exams. So in this episode, we continue looking at the August 2022 Science Paper 1, which is basically the standard or level physics. So the first two episodes, we've covered question 1 through 8 of the multiple choice section. So in this episode, we are continuing with question 9. So let us move straight to question 9. Which of the following equations best describes Charles's law of thermodynamics? So basically, the question requires us to identify among the equation which equation best describes Charles's law of thermodynamics. Then the question is, what does Charles's law of thermodynamics state? So it states that the volume of a fixed mass of a gas is directly proportional to its absolute temperature if pressure is kept constant. So this constant is pressure that we are keeping constant. So, it's the relationship between volume and the temperature. That's what basically the law states. So, if you look at the options, we need to eliminate anything that has more than volume and temperature. So, we notice that D, D does not have temperature, but it has pressure. Remember, pressure is being kept constant. So, D is out. C has pressure, because pressure is the constant which is K then uh, C is out. So remain with uh, basically A and B, which has uh, volume and temperature and the constant. So now, if you look at A, A is V multiplied by T is equal to a constant. So now this constant K is, is constant. It's, it's not changing. So if volume increases, to maintain this K, which you say if this is K is 100, then uh, T must reduce. So this one is an inverse relationship, not a direct. So A is out. We remain with B. So is B true? B should be true. So V over T is equal to constant. If V increases, to maintain K to be constant, T must increase. For example, if V was 100, then this was 20. 20 into 100 is a 5. So if V increases to 200, this becomes 200. For us to maintain this to be 5, uh, T must increase to what? 40. So that we have that. So this is basically a direct relationship. Hence B is correct. We move to question 10. The following diagrams show thermometers used in a school laboratory. Which thermometer? has the greatest range and which thermometer has the greatest sensitivity. So two things. The question requires us to, uh, out of these thermometers, identify which one has got the greatest range and the one which has the greatest sensitivity. So the greatest range is basically what you are saying is the biggest difference between the minimum value and the greatest value. That's the range. So let us start uh, looking at this. So here for T, the minimum is 0, which is 0. Then the maximum is 20. So 20 minus 0, we are getting basically 20 as in the range. Then we go to U, the minimum is 0, the maximum is 40. So it's 40 minus 0, we are getting a 40. Then uh, we go to V, it's, this is 0, 0. Minimum, the maximum 200. 200 minus 0, we are getting a 200. Then we go to W. Minimum is 140. And maximum is 300. So it's 300 minus 140. We are getting basically 160. So which one has the biggest range here? We know that in this case it's 200. 200 is the biggest here. So V has the greatest range. So we know that anything which is not V, among us the range, we take out. So C out, D out. So we mean with A and B. So we're looking for sensitivity. So which one has the sensi greater sensitivity such that uh, it's able to identify small changes in temperature? So 
we can improve sensitivity by incre increasing the number of markings so which one is these are the same I hate but which one has the small markings inside there so what you notice in this case Ian this is the range is the smallest so if the range is smaller then to be more sensitive so we notice that uh, we had men with U and T so between U and T which one is as the smallest range such that we are able to measure even minimal changes so you notice that t is the best here because the same height here we have uh, 40 markings here we have only 20 uh, intervals so meaning we're able to measure these subunits more accurately this is more uh, accurate so b is the correct answer let us look at question 11. A wave of frequency 13,000 A's travels 1,300 meters in 2 seconds. What is the wavelength of the wave? So basically, when you're talking about uh, the wavelength, you're talking about the distance between two successive crests or troughs of a given wave. Then we know the relationship is that our velocity is equal to our wavelength multiplied by frequency. So the question is asking us to find the wavelength, which is clear. It's very important to understand the question before you do anything. So in this case, we make the wavelength the subject of formula, which is equal to velocity over frequency. So have we been given frequency? Yes, you see this one. Have we been given velocity? No, but we've been given the distance and the uh, time. So we know that velocity is equal to a displacement over time. So displacement is uh, 1,300 meters. Then time is a uh, 2. So just make sure that if you have meters, then you have seconds. If you had kilometers, you convert kilometers to meters. So that uh, the base unit which is meters to seconds are used then we are going to have basically a 650 meters per second as a velocity so having found velocity then you can find the wavelength as equal to 650 uh, meters per second divided by a frequency which is a 13,000 hertz so we divide that we are going to get uh, basically about 0 0.05 meters as the wave length which is in this case uh, is A. We move to question A12. Light travels from air into a grass block of refractive index 1.5 as shown in the following diagram. Calculate the angle of refraction in the grass block so basically we need to find the angle of refraction so this is a basically normal then the angle of uh, refraction is basically this angle that we need to find so now we know the relationship between the angle of incidence which is in this case 60 and the angle of refraction is actually equal to medium one then assign angle of incidence then equals medium to um, deflective index then multiply by sine angle of deflection then this is a uh, medium one deflective index in this case what is medium one is coming from air to uh, the block so the block n2 is equal to 1.5 the refractive index of air which is uh, n1 is equal to uh, basically one of the air so in this case we substitute so we have one is equal to sine angle of uh, incidence is 60 degrees equals reflective index of the grass block is 1.5 then sine r this is the r we are looking for then we solve for r what we're going to end up with one times sine 60 we're going to have sine 60 degrees over 1.5 divided by 1.5 both sides is equal to sine r so we're looking for r is basically to solve for r we introduce the inverse of sine this side and this side so r is equal to basically 
the inverse of sine then multiply by this or thing which is sine 60 degrees over uh, 1.5 then uh, once you use the calculator you're going to discover that uh, R will be equal to uh, 35.26 so if you check from the answers you'll notice that C is in the correct answer so basically this is how you answer this question please join me in the next episode where we'll cover question 13 through 20